Hi, everybody. Good morning. I hope you're all doing well. I said good morning. I hope you're all doing well in the classroom over there. This is how you'll hear me. I'll be talking into this mask, and here's a waterproof microphone. Yeah. I'll let you hear what I'm talking about. Uh, I just wanted you guys to see an old friend. You probably all recognize. This guy, Harvey, he's out with us this year. He's been out last year as well. So he's been out helping us uh, document what's going on out here with the research. So it's great to have him with us. <laughs> Okay, all right, go. All right, Bradley, can you hear me up there? Yeah, I can hear you fine. All right, we're going to head down now. First step in this process, we need to try and find where the fish are. The dive site here that we're on is about 90 to 100 feet in depth. We don't usually go that deep. But the fish sometimes do. So, when the fish are really deep, we just stay above them or to the side of them. And uh, just watch what they're doing. And they really don't pay any mind to us at all. It's pretty amazing. In fact, you'll see when we get down there. And you guys remember, I told you the NASA group were uh, really, really friendly. You're going to see that on this dive. It's going to be pretty amazing. So, guys, when I'm on my dive, I'm, I don't know if uh, you guys are scuba divers yet, but you probably will be someday. I'm getting air from this tank that's behind me, and this computer on my wrist tells me all kinds of very useful information about how much air I have left. So that's how I can tell when it's time to come up. Now, here we are, coming up on the Nassau grouper. There's a whole heap of them out here, as you can see. Now, one of the things you might notice right away is, if you guys have seen pictures of Nassau grouper, fish don't look anything like the pictures you're used to seeing. That's because they take on completely different color patterns when they're at the spawning site. And they do this in order to indicate their readiness to spawn, their, their willingness to, to reproduce. And also we think that those color patterns that are useful for letting the fish know that they're not aggressive towards each other, so it helps them to not fight. It's kind of like waving a, a peace sign. You'll notice all of the different black and white colorations. That's a sure sign, given how many there are right now. And these fish are ready to spawn. As we get close, Really lucky to be able to experience this. It's truly a 
a magical thing. I see a big school of horse like that swimming overhead. And so these fish are likely here to spawn just like the Nassau grouper. Can you hear me? We do. Go ahead, Bradley. The question is, what's the largest Nassau grouper? The largest Nassau grouper ever caught is a little over a meter, about three feet, and about 60 pounds. If you just look at the fish that are here, some of these fish are about that size, getting close to it. Especially the big females. And so you are looking at some of the largest Nassau grouper that exist anywhere, and they're all right here. It's definitely the case that there are some record-breaking fish here in terms of their sizes. A really big fish here. And that's good, because big females produce lots and lots of eggs. And you need lots of eggs so that you can get more new baby nests on grouper on the reefs, because they have more fish to see and more fish to catch. They also asked, how many fish have you counted here today? I would estimate just by looking at it. We're probably looking at about 3,000, maybe 3,500 fish. So thousands and thousands of them. All right, guys, take up the slack, please, up top. I'm going to stop the recording, okay? That sounds good. All right. Hi. Woo. It's a lot of fish down there. <laughs> it's dead calm. It's pretty amazing.